Hello chaps and chapettes, and today I decided to do something a little different. Now you all know I love military history, but I'm also a little bit of a motorsport fan, just a little tiny teeny bit of one. Anyway, I was watching a video and thought to myself, what are some of the best qualifying laps of all time? Now we have many amazing moments in the wet. Heck, if you like this video, I may do another one where I look at some of the best wet qualifying laps, but I thought Looking at wet weather is unpredictable. It can be messy sometimes, so what are the best qualifying laps in the dry? Now of course we all have different tastes in motorsport and knowledge, and no one will be able to take biased views out of this one. So this is my top 5 best qualifying laps of all time. You may have some others, and they are going to be 100% valid. So if you do, pop them below and let me know. Heck, I may even do a follow up video if some of them, if I see the comments and you love this video and I see that those comments get a few likes and things like that. The five top 10 most liked comments of qualifying laps will definitely get a video made up about them if this video is successful. So we'll see how we go. Heck, we'll keep track of it. Keep track of it, get it? Anyway, let us start with number five. The 2009 Belgian Grand Prix Spa Fizzy Keller's Flyer. 2009 was a bit of an odd year for F1. The blown diffuser made its debut on a car that did not have an engine or a team a few months prior in that of Braun, formerly Honda, who pulled out in 2008, leaving Jensen Button and Rubens Barrichello without a drive, only to get a Mercedes engine and only go on to win the championship. We saw 25 different drivers race that season, despite the fact there are only 20 cars on the starting grid. And we would see the Force India car of Giancarlo Fisichella take an unlikely pole position at spa francorchamps jean Yes, that Force India was as slippery as Flavio Briatore covered in butter. Oh, jeebus, that's a bad mental image right there. But it was still an amazing lap. Although Fizzy had set a quick lap, time in wet practice, no one expected him or that Force India on pole. His first pole position since 2006 back in his Renault days. He came home in P2 at the end of the race, being beaten by the Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen, who had a Kerr system while he didn't in the Force India. But it was a mighty effort and a well-deserved fifth on this list of great qualifying laps. Number four, 2021 F2 race Monaco, Teo Porcher, the youngest driver on this list. So young, he is born after some of these laps. Porcher is a true up and coming French talent and his lap at Monaco in 2021 may be one of the greatest laps caught on camera at that track and in a qualifying lap in general. At 17 years old, he set a lap four tenths quicker than his nearest rival. Four tenths! He did a 120.985. Now, remember, F2 cars are spec. The teams can change setups, but they are pretty much all the same. Now, it does not mean much, but that was almost three seconds quicker than the 1988 pole position time for the classic F1 cars of that era. I wonder why I mentioned that lap time anyway. Porcher would go on to win the feature race from pole position, making him the youngest F2 winner in history at time of recording. It was an amazing lap, an amazing feat, and to be four tenths quicker in qualifying in F2 is a sheer ridiculous amount of skill, especially with some of the drivers they had in 2021. Number three, 2000 champ car Fontana, the closed course speed record Gilles de Ferran. This is a special one for me. Long-time viewers will know I have a little history with this lap. The year was 2000 and Penske were back at the top of their game after their win at Nazareth Motor Speedway netted them their 100th victory after being stuck at 99 for three years prior. It was all going well, having switched to the Reynard chassis and the Honda engine over their prior inbuilt chassis from the pool office. The championship looked good, and this is where I come in. Uh, I was working at, pool at the pool office in 2000-2003, working for Penske, 
and it was indeed a Raynard chassis. Most of the components were still built by the team in their XF1 offices in Poole, and that's where I was working at the time, which is really cool. Uh, but this is not why I've chosen this lap. We skipped to Fontana, Auto Club Speedway, and Gilles de Farin needed a good day after a horror show in Australia, and he did it with style, setting a lap which averaged at 241.428 miles per hour. On his closest rival set a lap time of 239 miles per hour. To give you an idea of the speed difference there, that's average lap speed, by the way, not top lap speed, average lap speed. Uh, he was a lot quicker. Taking pole position and, importantly, the bonus points, uh, he ended up in finishing in P3 in the race and would net himself and the team the championship. And, of course, setting the closed course speed record, which stands to this very day. Number two, the lap that only one man saw. 1988 Monaco, Senna. Okay, don't kill me. I know you are already typing. I can hear you. Stop, wait, and listen. There is a reason this is num not number one. Well, there are two reasons. Uh, you need to wait for number one, of course. But secondly, the lap is unseen. Only one man ever saw this lap, and that was Ayrton Senna himself, and possibly from outside the car. As he said himself, he went beyond driving that day. He went to another dimension. So maybe he would not even remember it. To say Senna was good is underselling it just a smidge. But as good as he was everywhere else, he was best at Monaco. Six wins in total, he was the king of that principality from 1989 to 1993. He could not be beaten there, in fact, with five straight wins. But one thing we all talk about when we hear Senna and Monaco is 1988, and one of the most iconic laps in F1 history. McLaren and Honda were unstoppable, if we ignore Monza. That year, winning every race other than Italy. But one of the most iconic moments of the 1988 season was qualifying in Monaco, where Senna pulled a lap from the sky and set pole position 1.4 seconds faster than his teammate Alain Prost, and 2.6 seconds faster than anything that wasn't a McLaren. Senna would go on to crash in the race on lap 67, but would go on to become the champion of 1988. The lap was never recorded and never seen, and I just can't put a lap that cannot be witnessed at the top of this list. Despite its status in motorsport history, it was a lap driven by a racing god, but it was not the lap of the gods. Number one, the lap of the gods, Bathurst, 2003, Greg Murphy. When you talk about tough tracks, the usual come up, Monaco, Le Mans, the Nordschleife Ring, but you speak to anyone that knows, they say, a mountain called Panorama in New South Wales, Australia. Yes, Bathurst. And any Aussie will say Kmart Racing and Greg Bloody Murphy in the 51. He may be a Kiwi, but that lap in the Holden Commodore made him an honourable Aussie. Murph made it to, into the shootout. He had to beat John Bow, who had set a lap of 2 minutes 7 seconds in his Ford Falcon. It was a high 2 minutes 7, a 2 minute 207.9, but it was a very quick one. But as you probably guessed with this video, it was not fast enough for pole. But it was how Murph did it, which is why this lap gives anyone tingles when you mention it. Murphy's lap was something else. First sector was already four tenths up to everyone's shock. This lap was beyond fast. So far, it was good. But it was after he got across the mountain top and down to the forest elbow that the pit lane stood up and had to blink in disbelief because he was nearly seven tenths quicker than John Bow. With only one sector left, what could the VY Commodore do down Conrod? John Bow stood shaking his head in disbelief at what he was seeing. His lap time was fast for Bathurst. It was below a 2.079. There is not much more time to be gained below that, at the mountain at that time. But Murph had none of that attitude as he launched it through the chase. He launched it out of the last corner and was a second faster. He had set a 2.06.85. He had gotten below the sevens for the first time at Bathurst and he did it in style. 
He would go on to win the race with Rick Kelly. But the best part? Well, listen to it in the man's own words. Car 51, and he is going straight to pole position for the Bob Jane t 1000 Murphy, a blistering oh, way. Holy smokes! <laughs> That's a record breaker. Man. That is insane. Well, <laughs> 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 Greg Murphy, the quickest ever lap around Mount Panorama. How good was that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's speechless. He's speechless. Take your helmet off for us. Gather yourself up. Talk us through the lap. What was it like? Oh, I can't believe that. I don't think I breathed the whole thing. <laughs> oh, I thought I'd stuffed it. I, I made a balls up out of the cutting. I mean, out of the, the dipper. I actually hooked first instead of third. So I cost myself a couple of tents. I just can't believe it. You cost yourself some tents. You think there's even more in it? There was more in it. I stuffed up. <laughs> oh. Murph cost himself a couple of tents and stuffed up. It would take seven years for that lap to be beaten, which goes to show just how special that lap was. Now, I need to actually start running away from the hordes of angry Brazilians who will be hunting me down. Let me know what you thought about this video in the comments below. And as I said, if you have another favourite qualifying lap, let me know what that one was. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. This is me, Carl Screezilla, wishing you all a wonderful day. Bye-bye.